If the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, plagiarized the Bible, which is the standard Quranic, the standard Afwan, the standard Orientalist trope, that he plagiarized the Bible in the Quran, and they say this even to this day, why didn't he copy these problems? How did he know to make this adjustment to the narrative? How did the Prophet وسلم, in quotes know that the rulers of Egypt at the time of Yusuf السلام, were called muluk? They were called kings, not pharaohs. The ruler at the time of Musa السلام, was called Fir'aun, was called Pharaoh. The Quran is correct historically. The book of Genesis gets it wrong. Why didn't the Prophet وسلم, call the ruler? Why didn't the Prophet again in quotes call the ruler of Egypt at the time of Yusuf السلام, a Pharaoh like the Bible did? How did he know to make this adjustment to the narrative? How did he know to avoid this, uh, this anachronism? It's called an anachronism. <clears throat> there are linguistic subtleties in the Quran that the Prophet ﷺ could not have known. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kafa ya ain saad, dhikru rahmati rabbika abdahu Zakaria. The name Zakaria in Hebrew means the mention of the Lord. This is what it, his name, Zakaria, in Hebrew means the mention of the Lord. So this verse is a play on words. Vikru rahmati rabbika abdahu Zakaria. The mention of the mercy of your Lord to his servant, the mention of the Lord. This is, there's this beautiful, subtle symmetry in this one ayah. The author of this ayah knew Hebrew. There's no doubt about it. If a Jew living in the Hijaz heard this verse, his ears would perk up. He would notice the subtlety. Another example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمْرَأَتُهُ قَائِمَةً فَطَحِكَتْ فَبَشَّرْنَاهَ بِإِسْحَاقِ That the wife of Ibrahim alayhi salam, she laughed, and then we gave her glad tidings of Isaac. Isaac means laughter. And then it says, وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِ is وَمِنْ وَمِنْ وَرَائِ إِسْحَاقَ يَعْقُوبِ وَمِنْ وَرَائِ إِسْحَاقَ يَعْقُوبِ And then following Isaac, Jacob. The name Isaac means laughter in Hebrew. The name Jacob means to follow or to come after. This is a type of wordplay that adds to the eloquence and brilliance of the Quran. Whoever composed this verse knew Hebrew. Of course we know this is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll give you another example. There's, there's hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of these types of examples. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Yahya alayhi salam, وَحَنَانَ مِنْ لَدُونَ وَزَكَاتًا وَكَانَ تَقِيَّا Now Yahya is John, John the Baptist, peace be upon him, most probably. The Quran calls him Yahya, meaning he lives because he was martyred. And the martyrs are alive. بَلْ أَحْيَا عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ They're alive with their Lord, receiving sustenance from their Lord. But the Hebrew name of John is Yohanan, which is related to Hananan. This is the only occurrence of this word in the entire Quran. And it's describing Yahya because it actually relates to his historical name. These are subtleties that go over the head of 99% of the Quran's readers. The author of the Quran is playing with these languages in a masterful way. Now we also believe in miracles, mu'jizat. Musa السلام, performed many miracles. The Ibnillah and secular historians do not consider miracles when determining what happened in history. That's part of our Iman Bil Ghayb, right? Because the past is Ghayb. We don't have access to it. We can't reproduce these things. Our belief in miracles is not irrational, nor is it falsifiable. It is based upon our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can argue rationally that this universe had a designer and a creator. And that this creator is personal. This is why there is something rather than nothing. This is a big philosophical conundrum for these philosophers. Why is there something rather than nothing? This creator who brought this universe into existence from nothing has power over every atom in the universe. Miracles are easy for him. But this is a philosophical argument. This is a theological argument. But from a standpoint of history, the Quran's narratives avoid the historical pitfalls of the biblical narrative.